the interesting thing about this recording of Honeysuckle Rose is it's not classic hot club style, it's more of a jazz trio style, so there's no two rhythm guitars and a violin. It's drums, double bass, piano, and Django on lead guitar. There's some really nice chromatic passages in this line that we're gonna look at, uh, and I'm gonna show you how you can see that line and how you can then put that into your own playing. Not so much from using scales, bebop scales, things like that. I mean, for me, I never really found learning scales to be that much use when learning to improvise jazz. I preferred learning arpeggios and then chord shapes and then grafting uh, lines onto those shapes and then moving them around the neck. So I'm gonna show you how I see these chromatic lines and hopefully be a big help to your playing. So let's check it out. <laughs> So before we start to lick, quick warning, um, uh, the original is way up here, but I found that a bit of a pain in the ass to play up there, so to teach this lick, we're going to move it down an octave, down to this nice friendly part of the uh, guitar. And the second thing is that the recording is in the key of F sharp, G flat, but Honeysuckle Rose is always played in F when you're at the jam or whatever. So we're going to learn it in that key, because I just think it's going to be more useful to you in your playing. So I'm going to break it down to three parts, okay? First part sounds like this. Second half sounds like this. The third part sounds like this. Okay, so it begins with this really nice chromatic bit which I'm going to explain how you can then take that and put it into your own playing. Um, we're playing over a C minor 7 chord. The next chord in the progression is an F7, and then after that, B flat, so it's a nice 2 5 one. It's going to start on the E string. We're going to go 3rd fret, 5th fret, 6th fret, and then from there, we're going to do this very cool chromatic pull-off thing. We're going to go pull-off, Pull off, pull off, and then down one fret, up stroke, and then up one fret, down stroke. So. Okay, really nice technique. Again, gives it a lot of color, cool Django kind of feel to it. Next, we've got one note on the B string, the fourth fret. And then we're going to go to the G string, we're going to play the 5th fret. Then we're going to do a uh, downstroke on the 3rd fret. Hammer on to the 5th, pull off to the 3rd. And then we're going to go all the way down to the 1st, and then to the 2nd. So we've got this. Quite a lot of notes there, let's just recap, so. Okay, the next part of the lick sounds like this. So it's two notes on the B string, the third fret and the first fret. One note on the G, the second fret, and then a nice chromatic bit on the D string, starting on the third, second, first, and then open. And there, funny enough, we land on the third of our B flat major. Let's see what we got so far. That alone is a really nice lick. It could have stopped there, but we've got more to come. We're now playing over a B flat major seven, and so Django goes up that arpeggio. We've just finished the previous part of the lick on third. The next bit we'll be playing on the D string, third fret, G string, second fret, then fifth fret, third fret, and then we're gonna do a little hammer on pull off. So hammer onto the fifth fret, pull off against the third. Then second fret, third, second, 
and then down to the D string, fifth fret. Again, that's quite a lot of notes, so let's have another look at it. That's the whole lick from top to bottom. Let's hear how the whole thing sounds. Now in that lick there are two nice little chromatic bits. One is here, and one is here. Now the first one is over a C minor chord, okay? And so what I do when I see that chromatic bit, I think, well, where does it start? Well, it starts here. And that would be the seventh of a C minor seven chord. And it kind of goes, kind of goes down to this uh, fifth there. So now I know that whenever there's a two, five, one, if I find my minor seven in the two chord, the minor seven chord, I can do this chromatic thing down to the fifth and it's kind of going to work. So let's say we're in the key of E. We've got a two, five, one being an F sharp minor seven, B dominant seven to the E major. Well, I know that on my F sharp minor seven, I can start here on the minor seven. I can go down here. Same if we're in the key of C. It's going to be D minor to G dominant 7 to C major. I can find my D minor here. I can get my minor 7. I can make up my own lick, but I know here I've got a nice bit of chromaticism right there that I can put in. Same with the next bit of chromaticism. That happens over an F7 chord. Well, I know now that on the five chord of those two five ones, I can put that in. It starts on the root of the chord, so I can get that in. So back to the key of E over this two five one. When I get to the, the five chord, I can find my one and then go like that. So. Yeah. Same if I was in the key of C. I find my five chord, I find my one, and I can put I can put it in. So guys, if you like the video, please hit the like button, then hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell. Uh, share it with all your mates. Uh, be sure to check out more because we've got loads more videos coming up. Uh, we've also got a Gypsy Jazz Hangouts podcast, which you can check out on Spotify, on YouTube, and on different po uh, podcast platforms. Loads of cool guests, cool playing, good times, everyone's having fun, so be sure to check that out. And until the next time, have a good one.